Most bankers aren't ready to help you until after their third cup of coffee. But with Central National Bank's after-hours service, you don't have to wait for the bank lobby to open to get help. You can contact us from 6 to 8.30 in the morning or from 5 to 10 in the evening, and we'll connect you to a real, live, local person who can answer questions and fix problems seven days a week. Bank different. Bank central. Central National Bank. Member FDIC. This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bois, Bois. King of the Hill podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm Rusty. Rusty, welcome to That Ain't Right Friday. It ain't right. Uh, we're starting a new thing here. This is, uh, we, we've come up with a name for it. It is Mason's first annual Bois Tournament of Cartoon Champions. So we're going to take uh, two, three, four episodes and we're going to compare shows. So Yeah, compare shows, of, compare like neighborhoods. Yeah, think of this as a bracket like your March Madness or whatever, but this is a bracket for cartoon shows. Yeah. So uh, I think we're going to start off big here. We're going to compare King of the Hill to Family Guy. Yeah, now, and the way it was going to start. Yeah, go, go for it. The way I was thinking of structure, we start with just main character, yeah. then supporting cast. Okay. Just also uh, running gags and just... You know. These are these are the rules, folks. We have to go by them. Robert's uh, these are Mason's rules of order. Also, who uh, who not necessarily whether or not you laugh more, but just which has better story structure for episode. Sure, sure, okay. All right, so we'll start off with Family Guy versus um, King of the Hill. All right. So, okay. um, Mason, you want to give us kind of the lowdown on those three or four things you just laid out? So let's go with the uh, main character first. I don't know how do you guys compare Hank Hill to Peter Griffin. Like who do you generally like and not to say who's a better human being or who's more who's more fun to watch? Sure. Like who's funnier? Like who do you enjoy? Well, I can tell you straight mm. up, I mean it's Hank. Um Hank for me is is always a better character. Peter Griffin's just an idiot. Uh he's yeah, a yeah, big yeah, fat yeah. idiot. And big, so fat, that's his dumb, that's dumb. his whole thing. Uh what about you? I'm not I don't know, I'm really not a not a big fan of Family Guy, really, honestly. I was uh, to begin with. Uh, well, to begin with, I was. Uh, the, my favorite anecdote about that show was me and my friend were watching it. We are probably like 12 or 13, and we're sitting at his grandparents' house, and his grandparents, uh, big nappers, you know, at lunchtime, being some old folks after For church. For some reason, I thought you were saying big nappies, like <laughs> giant diapers. No, no, no. That's the first. I've no, been no, watching no. a lot of British comedy Oh, I got lately, you. Yeah, so yeah. Nappy is a diaper. Yeah. yeah. So uh, during their nap time, we were watching King of the Hill on television, or re- some reruns of King of the Hill. Yeah. And uh, it was still on the TV when his grandpa came came up out of his nap and came to sit down on the on the chair in his chair, mm-hmm. and he's sitting there for like two or three minutes in his big nap, and his face just starts to turn, and he's like. What is this crap? Mm. He's not a family guy. He said, what kind of a family guy is he? This is this guy's not a family guy. And it just made me laugh. Every time I watch it, I'm like, yeah, Peter's just not a family guy. Well, I can see I can see an old guy, you know, thinking that. I mean, because And he's a deacon. He's an old deacon of a church. Reads his Bible at lunch after lunch while he's sitting in his in his chair, kind of thing. Gets up from his nap, doing Bible, getting ready for his Bible study kind of thing. Yeah, doing Bible stuff. A lot of lot of sitting in a chair, a lot of Bible, a lot of writing down notes. Yeah, begatten, begotten, be shatting, be shot and yeah whatever it is you know so, but uh that's, yeah, that's can, my anecdote for oh, it. what happened 
Uh, I can it, Mason. You all right? Did you fall down? No, I was just moving my. Okay. Um, pulled a four so, on us. Uh, if anybody doesn't know, when Mason's in the control room and we're in the we're in the little studio here, so we we often hear sounds and we don't know what they are, and I'm sure the same goes for him. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, because you hear this. That's me hitting my mic, and that sucks. It hurt my ears. Yeah, I'm sure it did. So for you, Mason, what do you think about the two characters? Uh, well, I mean, Hank's obviously the better written one. So this was this was an easy subject. It's gonna get a little, sure. probably get a little harder, especially when we do other shows. Yeah, Family Guy's just the easiest one. Um, I, but I do think sometimes the things Peter says are a lot funnier than Hank's ever sure. said. Like I can, you can meme Peter a yeah. lot easier. Yeah. I mean, I still love Rock Lobster. That's still hilarious. To oh me. sure, you know um, the song, right? Yeah. Yeah. Rock, no, well, you know, um, Family Guy, they have a rock lobster. Mm -hmm. it, was, it wasn't a rock. Mm -hmm. It was a rock lobster. lobster. <laughs> yeah. Um, B-52s. But in terms of character, I do, I do, it, it, this also goes into writing. I do like how Peter, when, how, well, he's not always called out, but Peter's often in the wrong. Yeah. And he's usually called out for it, usually when it's good for an episode. But I, sure. one thing that does kind of annoy me, especially in later seasons, is how Hank's always in the right. Like no matter where, yeah. no matter what, he's always in the right. That's true. And I, I mean, sometimes I mean that's fine. I mean, Hank's a good guy, but sometimes I was like him to be wrong and like like a human, yeah, and be wrong and called out on it. Yeah, I see yeah. what you're saying, but that's the one thing that I like about uh, King of the Hill over Family Guy is the tales of morality at every at the end of every episode. Mm -hmm. yeah, Family Guy just became a clip show. It just became like yeah. a TikTok feed or well, something like that. It's a lot like of that. flashbacks. It's yeah, a lot of that's, that's what it feels like to like me. That, yeah. Is that uh, Seth MacFarlane quickly understood that the audience that was coming up didn't have a very good attention span. Because yeah. my dad watching a show like that, he gets annoyed with it because sure. it's just. Ksh, ksh, ksh. I mean, the jokes are funny and my dad laughs, but he could he can't watch a hundred episodes of Family Guy. People our age, they can just run through. Like my sister could turn on Family Guy and watch it for the next three days straight and never be discontent. And you know, for our generation, I feel like that's that's what it became all about: these quick clips, quick funny, quick joke. Instead of having a show that's built out and structured it was more about cramming as many jokes as possible in 22 minutes that we could get in it minus even, commercial it's time. even worse now well, well it's, it's gotten a little better now but it's even worse for a long time i would think family was, is a lot harder like the to first, write because of that it is also because they spend the first 10 minutes of the episodes on something unrelated and they actually don't get to the main plot yeah. of the episode till after yeah. the first commercial break do y'all know the opening to family guy do you know what that refers to like her sitting there playing the piano and everything married with children no no it's uh, all in the family so oh. it, it goes back to archie bunker you know because they sit there and play i thought it was i guess it's like a combination of the two then because the song of it reminds me of like, it does, something kind of for like love yeah. and marriage yeah. i don't know, you know what's yeah. i don't know maybe not insane uh, what's that? it's probably easier for you guys but when i watch older episodes like from the first two seasons yeah and you like you know how a lot of the a lot of the show is them sitting in front of the tv and the, sure. their writers make fun of a show or something right Half the time they're shows, and I was like, I, I have no idea. Like, oh, you don't they, know didn't what the they did one are? about the Brady Bunch or yeah. one about ah, yeah. the old, uh, the Osmond, fa not the Osmond, I think the Osmond family yeah. or something yeah. like that. Well, Seth, Donnie, McFarlane is a, Seth McFarlane is a kid from the 70s, so yeah. a lot of his references are all, you know, like late 70s, early 80s television, mid 80s, all the way yeah, through the so 80s. So a lot television. of those just go over my head. A lot of them go over my head, too, honestly. There's not a lot of, uh, a lot of those television because uh, I, you know, growing up in England. Oh, Seth is fifty years old. Yeah, Seth is fifty. So, huh. uh, so yeah, definitely the eighties and stuff 1973, like that. Nineteen seventy three, same year as my wife. Yeah, so mm -hmm. he, so he got all of that. Same year the San Antonio Spurs started too. Yeah, it was the same year. Good year. So he got all <laughs> of that influence of the seventies and eighties TV. That's where a lot of his references and stuff come from. Is from that era of television, those era of sitcoms and stuff like that. And he's a big show tunes guy too. Like, yeah, Broadway. and, and that has to do with his dad. Being from the era of oh, show sure. tunes and yeah. stuff like that, yeah, and, and passing on that love to Seth MacFarlane. Well, that's McFarlane. the stuff you hear in your house, right? Yeah. I mean, that's that's what you grow up on, yeah. so that's what you make fun of. Yeah, I, I, um, I will say I do, and we'll go. We'll, this is not really going to have that much structure to it. I do think <laughs> Family Guy has like better tournament. overall. No yeah, Family Guy has, has better music than King of the Hill, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, you're right. They only have that. one musical esque episode, the Bluegrass one. Other than that, it's just. There's not really anything there. I do like when Family Guy does musicals. I don't know, man. Satan you know, sucks. um, uh, yeah. the um, the bag of weed song. Um, that's great. There's that's probably like one of the top three ones. That's such a good because it's such a whole like it, it it lasts so long in that one episode that song that it is half of the episode. I think like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's um, 
Now, what do you guys think? Of, I guess supporting cast is hard. I guess we can do this. Okay, let's start with friend groups. Yeah. And then we'll go to the kids and the wives and stuff. So you've got Giggity, whatever his name is. Quagmire. Yeah. And which Cleveland is like, and Joe. Which is like the guy a in the wheelchair, creepy that's boom Joe. hour. Yeah. And then you got Cleveland. So uh, one of whom, which is funny because one of whom left to do a spinoff and then came back yeah. when the spinoff was canceled. Yeah. Which is kind of funny. When he, which when he which comes, the spinoff was canceled and it and then it returned, so it was yeah. King of the Hill. It was very so contented. when he comes back, topic. do they reference topic. it? Yeah, they reference it a okay. lot. Right. For a That's while they did. Yeah. Very it's meanly, like, too. Well, it's just like, um, you know, the girl being replaced as the sister on Roseanne. And, yeah. Well, that's a big uh, point of contention kind of for, for, for us here at Bois is the uh, Cleveland show canceling our show and our show not getting a proper send off due to the Cleveland show. Well, I, I'm a little worried about the reboot because of replacing people also because there's a yeah. there's a lot of people there's you got to replace and you know the as one time passes you yeah know, who knows another awkward thing is how like because like cleveland and and um i think his, his wife's name is donna they're still married yeah. and like still have, they still have those kids just the kids almost never talk yeah because they just don't want to pay the actors sure which is hilarious sure. they're there they just never say anything i'm sure the further they get into the show which how long has it been on now it's been on over 20 years. 400 20 years, years yeah yeah uh, the longer that shows on, I'm sure the more expensive it became, just like any other show, you know, look at the Simpsons and what those folks make at this point. Mm -hmm. So you do have to cut down on character voices, I would assume, because it's just going to cost you I mean, you not money. really when Seth voices half the damn cast. Well, that's true too. Yeah. <laughs> you're right about that. And Mila Kunis barely ever talks. Oh, really? Yeah. Or Seth Green. Any more? No, they're, they're there, but they, if anything, they only get like one line. Yeah. If that. I'm sure. I'm sure anything. they're paid by the word or something. Oh yeah, yeah. Then, All right. Um, so supporting cast, I'm going to give that to their Hank. friend group. A better yeah. friend group, though. Dale. I mean, Dale, I mean, they're funnier too. So uh, let's go to who wives. do you compare Dale to? Oh, you know, Dale's comparable to. Mm. You can't. I guess there is no real big conspiracy theorist. Dale reminds me of. I think he'd be more Joe. Joe right? Well, yeah. if you want to call him Joe, but Dale reminds me more of Cleveland's. Redneck neighbor in the Cleveland show sure. yeah. than he does of anything else. I if I had to put him as a character, how good. each of us, each of uh, Hank's friends, do get their own sub, do get like their own episodes true. from time to time. It's true, yeah. and their families too, not just them. You know, because yeah. like the last episode was Nancy's. really Nancy's yeah. episode. Yeah. yeah, all Nancy in all, and somebody who's not even in the family, yeah. John Redcorn. Uh -huh. All of, all in all, it boils down to intent. No Joseph though. Yeah, no Joseph at all. There's no Joseph. Well, he might be Quagmire grown up. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, but uh, the intent, I guess, of the writing is is the difference in the shows. One show yeah. is intent is to make you laugh nonstop, yeah. and then the other show's intent is to make you look at your life in a comparison to a show and find those comparisons and find humor with inside of those real world connections. Whereas uh, King uh, Family Guys extremely nonsensical where one person gets their arm cut off in an episode and the next episode their arms back kind of sure. thing whereas Hank or in King of the Hill they explore continuity they may not be 100% with their continuity as we've already sure. picked out a couple of things that aren't but they definitely stick with the majority of uh, of as much continuity as they can find and much as they can keep cuz they too have writer changes and differences in writers and they've went through strikes along the way of their I, uh, I blame too. I blame the skips in continuity on the network and that's probably what yeah. it is probably network stuff it's usually especially things when that are bad with shows it's network's fault <laughs> yeah and especially and and, may, and the main things with the continuity that we find is not just necessarily continuity it's nothing big it's like the computer the show. thing and yeah. stuff like that and yeah. that's not continuity in production no that's continuity in releasing yeah. schedules that's why i say it i'm and sure network, it's network issue yeah because yeah. some of those episodes that have that we've that we looked back at the beginning of this one where the hillenium and the computer was like three episodes later before you saw right. the computer again right. and stuff is because if you look at the production numbers of all of those, they're in... They fall out of order. Th they fall out of order if you go with the chronological order of the show. But if you go with the chronological order of production, those little continuity issues, you don't see them as much because that's the way that the writers intended for it to flow yeah. and the animators intended it to flow. But I bet. Of course, production uh, uh, with the Hellenium episode and with stuff like that, it all gets shuffled around by, by network execs. I bet the person who ran the show Bible that drew, drew, uh, drove them insane. You know, because Which would probably be Mike. I imagine Mike probably did the show you Bible. You see these people with show Bibles, and they are so in tune with continuity. 
that when something happens, it's it's a huge thing. Oh, know? yeah, it's a huge thing. But Working with uh, F and stuff on, on our animation podcast, he showed me some show bobbles and stuff like that, and oh, it's it's insane. Well, he showed me one specifically on one of our episodes that we did uh, about the, the, the Jungle Book thing that he was doing. So yeah. Disney had approached him and said, we want to do a Ren and Stimpy-esque-ish Kind Such of, uh, and, and not, and not in the, and not in the vein of like potty humor, like Ren and Stimpy, yeah. but in the vein of irreverent comedy for children. Sure. Uh, Cause that's what, of course, Ren and Stimpy started out as, is a reverent comedy. But they for were children. doing it with what? Baloo and who else? Uh, Baloo and Mowgli is who uh, they were going to okay. do it with. It was going to be it. the bear and Mowgli. Yeah. And, uh, actually, uh, you can go check that episode out. Animation conversation, uh, anywhere you get podcasts, YouTube, YouTube, preferably. Uh, but yeah, so that, that whole episode, he just kind of talks about, uh, uh, how this show could have been kind of thing. Yeah. And then the whole show, he goes over the show Bible saying, well, we could have done this and could have done this. And, uh, I just can't just, just imagine how many shows out there that are like that, that never really get produced oh absolutely yeah. and okay so mason you said next one is wives yeah oh, why so lois, lois peggy. versus peggy lois yeah. is the better wife um, are you sure about that rusty i think <laughs> lois is the better wife for sure because her husband puts her through infinitely more bull that's true than hank yeah. puts his wife through if anything with hank it's his wife putting him in awkward and weird situations with her uh, overinflated ego or yep. whatever you want to call it. And with Lois, it's a give and take. There's more give and take in their relationship, I feel like. Well, that last episode of ours, Peggy's. you know, he could have read anything for the filibuster, but she's got two years worth of mu musings in her purse. So he read her know? musings. So he has to read the musings and yeah. be embarrassed by it. I feel like as a husband, he is way more supportive of Peggy than Peggy is of him. Oh. Whereas in Lois yes. and Peter's relationship, I feel like they're, they, they have more... I hate to say it like this, but I think they have more equity and equality in their relationship than uh, Hank and Peggy do. Well, it varies by episode. Yeah, yeah it does vary by episode. But when you see, but as uh, an average, you know, even even when you see Hank ultimately get hit on by somebody, he just doesn't know what to do because no, he's don't. so into that relationship that he's just he like, okay, even that think part's about over. The possibility. Yeah. He doesn't even think about the possibility of being yeah. being sought by somebody. No, no, no. Uh, so yeah, I think I think Lois is. Better. I mean, to be fair, Peggy never slept with Bill Clinton. That's true. That's true. Um, but I think I think Lois ultimately is the better sane one for the most part. But uh, Peggy is stronger. I think she's a stronger character. She's a mm -hmm. much better character. Because yeah. because Lois does seem like she gets put on the back burner a lot. She does. She doesn't. Uh, and and that's what I like about King of the Hill is. Uh, Generally, these main characters they have equity screen time. They yeah. all have an, they all have an equitable time on screen. Sure, they all have uh, an equitable purpose, and uh, that's what I kind of like. It you you get invested in them is because they create equity in the characters, and I feel like that King of the Hill does that better than a lot of these irreverent comedy shows. Whereas you know, like The Simpsons and. Uh, Family Guy, Cleveland yep. Show, American Dad. I feel like they spend a lot of time, you know, way far off into the 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 irreverent comedy stuff, and a lot of the story stuff kind of gets pushed to the wayside because they're too busy, like I said, with jokes. And there's nothing wrong with that, and a lot of people enjoy that. Otherwise, they still wouldn't be on TV after 30-plus years of King of the Hill and 20-plus years of Family Guy. Yeah. Uh, I just yeah. think you're – you're building a ship that's going to fall apart at some point when it's all jokes. Yeah. You know, and I think that's what we've seen in family guy that, uh, over the years, it's really kind of fallen apart. It has. And nowadays with TV ratings, I imagine the TV Means ratings nothing. don't really support the, the shows anymore, yeah. but the fact that they're just revenue machines that well, they just continue to generate money that Nielsen they're on just TV. now is starting to come around to electronically collect. Yeah. Results. They're going to have to get, to, they're going to have to be some kind of metric measurement for this stuff. Otherwise, how are we going to, you know, how are networks going to gauge whether this is going to be something that they keep yeah. on TV? And I, yeah. I don't think, I think they're harder on shows nowadays than they ever have been because you'll have something on Netflix that'll just be a phenomenal first season of yeah. something with a great, Canceled. critical yeah. critical uh, uh critics were you know rave about it and stuff like yeah. that but the fact that not enough people watched it yeah and i think that a lot of good shows are getting killed like that just based off of uh simple ratings and stuff whereas uh 
the appreciation of a cult and following is lost. It's also about um, if you you can't just start it. They care more about if you start it and actually finish the whole season. Yeah, because yeah. they they care more about if you binge the whole thing within mm-hmm. two days mm-hmm. or because you can't with them for some reason you can't just start it, wait a week or like wait like three months and then you finish it. Yeah. You have to do it within like that opening weekend. Or otherwise, I just well, realized, you know, I, that's why that's why like Disney and people like that drop them one at a time because if it really gets critical panning then they can cancel it just like a regular network. Yeah. You know, whereas Netflix, they pay for the whole thing. Well, once. they have, you know, I'll give Netflix their well, flowers I wouldn't necessarily on say it's things. just the uh, panning. I think it's more because this got off topic, but I think there it's more just to keep word of mouth going. Yeah. 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 And and they did and do interest. some like good like last for Stranger world. Things, I mean, as much as I like Stranger Things, no one's, people stopped caring after like two weeks. Sure. Yeah. And they did do some good in the world, too. And even Hulu, they brought back shows that otherwise would have died. Trailer Park Boys, Letter Kenny, you know, both of those yeah. are really good franchises that just didn't have the networks that thought they were going to do good. And you know what? Who benefited from that? The streaming services. Letter Kenny did amazing on Hulu. They brought it back. They did so much stuff for it. They did so many uh, mini stuff and I animations. Hard, I have such a hard time with Canadian comedy. That is the only two shows out of any Canadian comedy yeah. that I've been able to watch, and it's because it's relatable to Texas. the The whole trailer park sure, thing is it. relatable yeah. to Texas, and then the whole like country Backwoods, redneck thing, yeah. the Letter Kenny thing, the yeah. terminology and the language. I had to learn the tarps sure. off, boys. Let's sure. smoke a dart. You had to yeah. learn all that stuff. But once you have the lingo for that, yeah. it's just as funny to me as watching King of the Hill and seeing all these Texas Texas I'm, things. I'm going to say something that might um, isolate us, but um, I always think of Canadian uh, television shows as like American light. Like it's it's almost an American show. Yeah, they yeah, want to yeah. be American so badly, and and I think that's what I, I I like about those two shows is there is a uh, there is a lot of juxtaposition in American culture and the Canadian culture in those shows. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah. Like, but when you think the about poor s- guy eating a stick of pepperoni and a bag of chips, <laughs> you know that's like eating a slim jim and a bag of chips in the trailer park kind of thing, or smoking a joint in the trailer park. You know, hash coins is currency. You know, now, <laughs> it's just, just, just real good writing. I, I think. will tell you that um, SCTV is one of my all-time favorite shows. And that's and a great one. Yeah, SCTV was all Canadian. I mean, it was it all came out of Canada. Yeah, I've been but uh, when going back and Martin watching Short some of that. and people like that. I mean, you you. It's hard to fail. Yeah, it's really, really hard to fail. Not that there is there is some funny stuff in it, and it's just like with British TV too. British TV feels the same. Like when I go over, when I've sure. been over to England and watched their TV and sat down my aunt, I'm like, this is like Law and S. This is like Law and Order SVU, <laughs> but with British accents and yeah. like bad bad camera work and bad lighting and stuff. Like I don't know if the production values are different or whatever in like some of these TV programs, and I imagine some of the budgets are probably different, but. Uh, I don't know. It just doesn't seem as it just like you said. It seems like TV light. <laughs> it does seem TV light. Right now, I'm watching a show called Back, B A C K. Yeah, I've and it stars one. David Mitchell, who was okay. in the Peep Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard stuff. about it. Yeah. It's 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 very dry. It's very yeah. very English. But I, I actually I really hold enjoy a prescription. That, so. uh, uh, I hold a subscription to uh, Brit Box. That's completely different than holding a prescription. Yeah, I meant to say subscription. <laughs> I subscribe to uh, Brit Box, and I only yeah. subscribe to it for all of the yeah, uh, sure. Black yeah. Adder. Yeah, I yeah, watched yeah, yeah. all of Black Adder yeah. on there. If you haven't never watched Black Adder, that is it's the very funny. the start of Rowan Atkinson and Hugh Laurie. I think. Rowan Atkinson is funnier than that than he is in Mr. Bean. Yeah, which a lot of people d- would never associate uh, Hugh Laurie. Hugh Laurie yeah. it, with, with Rowan Atkinson, but yeah. he was in, he did some Blackadder stuff. But another really good one is uh, uh, oh, what was it called? It was Stephen Fry and Hugh Laurie's show. I can't remember oh, what the name of that is. That was another like, but that's uh, another sketch comedy funny, show, right? Funny shit. Yeah, it's super funny. Uh, a lot of that humor which a lot of people don't n- know how much of, of that old british humor can be credited to like a lot of comedians will credit a lot of that stuff to especially in the in the world of irreverent comedy sure. a lot of that stuff goes to a lot of those 
early British guys like the the Monty Pythons yeah. and all the skits and stuff. The, well, skit, this, the sketch comedy coming out of England. This show back, gold. like I said, has David Mitchell, but it's also got Robert Webb, who was the other guy in Peep Show. If you've never watched Peep Show, well, it's, Peep a really good good too. Com- it's a really good sketch uh, The show. IT crowd is a, a, IT a good great. one, too. That's, yeah. not a, that's not a sketch show, but that one's pretty funny. Well, that's the meme you get of the guy just jumping out the window when he's tired of the meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, any of that stuff really is good. But keeping up with appearances, Faulty Towers, Faulty if y'all Towers. just like comedy Do you know they're in rebooting general, Faulty Towers? I did not know that. <laughs> I, 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 that right there will be a stretch well, to be able to be funny it's again. John Cleese. It just, it's John Cleese rebooting it. Oh, so he's coming back. I don't know if he's coming back as, as Basil. Faulty as Basil. But, but uh, with him behind it, I'm more apt to watch it. I'm more apt to watch it with him behind it, too. And if he reprises his role as Basil, that would be just... I think it would be great. I don't, know great. If the, I don't know if the little guy still is alive or not. Oh, the little Spanish guy? Yeah. And that's the funny thing, too. And that's what, like, <laughs> as a as a God. little kid you couldn't do growing half of up, that shit today, you couldn't though. do half of that no. at all. But as a little kid growing up in Texas, re-watching all these shows with my mom, because my mom would watch a lot of uh, uh, PBS, because yeah. a lot of the British shows were on PBS, and... Uh, I remember watching it, and it was so relatable because I lived in Texas, and you have Spanish mm-hmm. speakers in Texas. Sure. But, but, it, but it was a sp- literal Spanish guy oh, from man. Spain, and it, oh, it was just so good. It was, it was a really, really good show. He's just so funny. Um, Mason, you ever watch Faulty Towers? No. Uh, okay. You really should. You should I, uh, Remind me, and I'll give you my login to BritBox. Since you, like, uh, since you like these kind of cartoons, I think you would like that. It's just oh, you would real, love it. It's, it's real-life cartoon is all of it. I think it's you really, would love it. It's like Pink yeah. Panther. It's Very just, funny It's stuff. hilarious. All right, so we got off track here, Mason. Where are we? We, we just did Wives, and then we ended up with BritBox. Um, well, we kind of covered it, you know, story structure and episode structure. and. Okay, so this is final vote? Uh, I mean, we, we, it's, it was pretty going to – it was – Kind of clear from when we started sure. King of the Hill. Well, it is Over a King, King of the Hill King podcast, the Hill. but I I can think. Um, well, actually, we can talk about one thing. Um, yeah. Even though it cut, it's it's a weird because um, King of the Hills of the big of all the more famous animated mm-hmm. comedies. I mean, American Dad only has two kids, but all the others have typically have three kids. Yeah, no, so, that's true. Um, even, but King of the Hills is the only one I can think of where it's just it's just Bobby. Okay, so, so do th- like in terms of like characters, do you comp- like can you really compare? You can't really compare Bobby to anybody. Chris no. and Meg and Stewie are very different from him. Yeah, very much so. Mm-hmm. Um, that is where the shows differ quite a bit uh, in those kid characters or the family characters and things. Because Hank's family is so large, you know, when you start including Luann and then later Lucky and all those people that are in his life. Yeah, um, he's got he's got a big and I, I honestly I include his neighbors, which I don't in Family Guy. Family Guy is just these guys you get together with at the bar. Hank is with these other three guys all the time. I mean, constantly. So much he thought about taking them to a romantic restaurant. That's what, exactly yeah, what I was yeah. going to say. Yeah, last episode he was going to take them to the to the uh, spaghetti restaurant. Um, so I think it, it's clear that my vote is for Family Guy. What about you, Russell? I'm going to say uh, I'm going to say King of the Hill. I have to vote. I mean, for I'm sorry. I meant I mean you meant King of the Hill. I meant as well. King of the Hill. And I said so we're Guy, we're yeah. we're we're three and zero unanimous. I'm sure anyone. King of the Hill. Right, right, Mason. Uh, yeah, I mean, Family Guy yeah. has a lot of its good parts. And again, this is just all subjective. You so I mean, King of the Hill is more serious. Yeah, Family Guy can be more fun to watch. Sure. Um, but also it can also not be like it's a lot. Sometimes it's a well, lot like, bloodier, a lot more violent. I feel like and if you sit down and watch Family also Guy. Also a lot meaner. Yeah. I feel like if you sit down and watch Family Guy, you could watch 10 minutes of it and it doesn't matter. Doesn't you know, matter at with all. With King of the Hill, you, you kind of have to know the continuity, the story, that sort of thing. You have to know the characters a lot more. The beginning of the episode affects the end of the episode. Yeah. To watch Peter Griffin fight a big chicken, you don't really need to know. I mean, that's always funny. Yeah. But you don't need to know anything. Yeah. You know, going in. So, yeah, we all voted for, for King of the Hill. Surprise, surprise. Um, next week, I would like to do Bob's Burgers. Please tell me you've watched enough of that, Rusty. I, I have watched enough of Bob's Burgers. Uh, I is that, cause this is actually, that's actually my that's family. Because like, that's like the closest comparison yep. to these two. Yep. Both yeah, are Bob's really Burgers good. good, and the reason why I like Bob's Burgers so much, I'm not gonna try to go too far into this yeah, one, is Squiggle Vision. That's why I like Bob's Burgers, and if you know anything about what Squiggle Vision was, you'll know why I like Bob's Burgers. 
All right, so we'll get into that next week. Um, and the reason I bring that one up is I have thought seriously about doing a Bob's Burgers podcast, uh, kind of in the style that we do, King of the Hill. Well, call me. Uh, maybe a little differently because I don't know yeah. that we want to print out scripts every week. but um, They're there. I've seen them. Yeah, they I've, I've seen them too. Uh, well, you that's, guys, that's one you have to eat food with. You can't not eat food and watch that show. I think with that one, of chewing. I think that one we, we might actually have to have – a cooking element to that where we make a sandwich each episode. Oh, that'd episode. be cool. That'd be cool. We try to, because there's Bob Burger recipe books. Oh, really? So I feel like we if should, we did something like YouTubers that, we would have, have to make the sandwich with each episode. Say it again, Mason. A lot of YouTubers uh, go and make recipes from the show and you, and you realize, well, damn, Bob actually puts a lot of work into this. I show. love yeah, really the does. names of the burgers that are up on the chalkboard that never really get referenced. Just yeah, yeah, every yeah. once just, in a while. Just every once in a while you see it up there, yeah. If looks could kale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I'm going to ask our audience, if you are listening and uh, you're listening to this, uh, would you – partake in a bob's burgers yeah uh, would you want to podcast it probably be once a week something else i don't think we do that one twice a week but well, or if you want to just tell us what you and which show of king and then, of the and family guy might lead you... into uh, doing other anime yeah, shows there's there's the guys in australia that do the king of the hill podcast yeah they started off doing the simpsons and then they're they're adding different shows to their little network of shows that they have sure. as they go along so yeah that'd be cool i think that might be fun like uh, bob's, bob's burgers. burgers seems like it would be a good one there's to start like, with what 12 ep- 12 seasons that uh, almost 12 15 something yeah. like that yeah. honestly that one could be a multi parter cuz that just cuz they are so similar yeah they really yeah, are for sure really are. all right so we'll do that comparison next week uh again if you're listening give us a vote uh, like mason said you know if it's not that one tell us which other ones you want us to uh, compare to or just tell us which show you like more yeah that's true too um we should probably put out a poll of some kind somewhere so look for that on our social media. Yeah, we'll put yeah, out look a, poll. For a poll. We'll put a poll yeah. out on that. And we'll ask you for uh, for which show you want us to do next. Yeah, week. for for input and stuff like that. All right, that's it. Uh, the first annual tournament of cartoon champions episode one is done, uh, and we'll move on to the second one next Friday. We no, not we, Matanya. Uh, you can find us at bwaakoth dot com, or you could go to roguemedianetwork.com slash bwaakoth. And if you would like to support us, you could go to patreon dot com slash bwaakoth. And it's only three dollars uh, a month. Click the three dollar option to, yeah, to help easy. support us. We easy appreciate stuff. you. All right, Mason. What do we say at the end of these shows? I forget. You do not. Come on. I don't want to do it. Okay. We Matanya. We Matanya. Indeed. And for Mason, we have done Tanya. We have done This has been a Rogue Media Network production.